Okay, folks. This particular video is going to be specifically aimed at describing what led me to no longer using ice in my cooling vessel that you can see over here on the right side of my setup. Um, and why I don't think it's entirely necessary to do so. There are some scientific things that are at work here, some physical properties of certain things that don't change regardless of what we do, and some things that led me to believe and conclude that there really isn't, there isn't going to be a huge advantage to using ice. Someone may be able to poke holes in that theory, but um, I would like to point out that my intention is to do this with as little energy as possible. And that's difficult to do, as most of you who've done this have figured out. It's difficult to be conservative with the energy. You're putting heat in, there's heat loss, there's heat gain. You're turning water to vapor, turning water to steam, um, which some arguably believe they may be entirely different things. Steam and vapor, two different things. Some people may feel that way. Um, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to get water to 100 degrees because oh, at that point, water at 100 degrees is going to start to um, to uh, become a vapor and it's going to leave uh, the place it came from, uh, wherever that may be. In this case, it's in this vessel. So at 100 degrees, it leaves um, where it starts in a liquid state, it changes its state to uh, mostly a vapor. And um, in this particular case, it pressurizes the vessel and then the pressure that the vessel contains is actually automatically releasing itself through the copper pipe. That particular copper pipe sends the vapor up as high as it can until the pipe starts to head downward towards the earth where gravity imparts its own effect on it. The cooling effect and condensing effect of the copper cooling, uh, which folks at this point isn't much, starts to uh, return the H2O into its, uh, into its liquid state again. Uh, falling down through here. It fills up the coils that sit in the water bath. The water bath is intended to cool the coils further so that when the pressure finally overcomes and exceeds the um, the ability for the water to stay in the copper, it starts to actually rise up through my riser here. It rises up because of pressure. The pressure built up behind it. I'll get to that in a second. And then it starts to fall into here and drip into this can or I should say this bottle. Um, that is pure water that I've been making here for the past hour. Um, and um, as you can see, it's still going. Now, I want to point out that my cooling bath is right now hovering at a temperature of 98 degrees. It's difficult for you to see here. I have a little mark on there. That little mark on there indicates where 100 degrees is, and the pointer is just before it. Okay? Just before it. So you understand that the water at this point right here in the bath is less than 100 degrees. There's a small amount of vapor being produced over here where the entry point is. We can follow it down into the back and there's a small amount of vapor right there because right there the water is probably very close to 100 degrees. Okay, enough said. At 100 degrees it can go to vapor. But everywhere else in the mass of the solution it is less than 100 degrees. That means it will condense vapor back to its liquid state, provided it isn't as a whole greater than 100 degrees. Okay, enough on that scientific point. Now we come on over here and we go to the other side of the pressure pot. First thing I'd like to say is this particular pressure vessel is, getting tongue tied, is um, a 15 pound vessel. So if you look to the top of this where the handle is, you'll see there's a little red dot. That little red dot indicates that the pressure vessel has reached or exceeded 15 PSI. And normally that will be regulated on the other side, but I have taken the regulation factor away from it and allowed the vapor to just escape once we reach 15 pounds. If you've been paying attention this far, you realize 15 pounds is not a whole lot, but it's enough. We need to increase that pressure to 15 pounds so that once this water starts to go back to coalescing and becoming water in a liquid form, the 15 pounds of pressure is what's going to rise it up the pipe and down into the storage container, <clears throat> as you see it's doing. So if your temperature is too low, that little red that little red indicator will lay too low into the pot and it'll allow vapor to leave. 
So, you know, once you get right around 99 degrees, the, uh, the water starts to vaporize. The pressure hasn't increased to the point yet to where this particular red dot rises up and locks the vessel. Locks the vessel in such a way that now the vessel can perform its duties the way it's supposed to. So that means that in order to boil water at 100 degrees in a 15 pound pressure vessel, hmm, that leaves something out of our equation. What does it leave out? Oh, oh, yes, it does. Those of you that are paying attention and you're a little nerdy like myself know that for every pound of pressure um, in order for you or above atmospheric pressure in order for you to boil water, um, you're going to have to add three degrees to the boiling point. So we're in a 15 pound pre pressure vessel. Um, three times 15 is 45 degrees. You'll note on my thermometer the, if you can see it, I don't know if you can quite make it out, but those of you who are familiar with these small thermometers, you'll see that that is reading about 145 degrees. If you can hear very faintly, the water's boiling in the vessel. Now, I've reduced my stove, <laughs> reduced my stove temperature by turning the dial down to three. Okay, so it's pretty low. That's as low as I can go. Any lower than that, we don't have boiling. We don't have vapor. We don't have pressure to drive that up. We don't have pressure built up to push the fluid through, to push the vapor through, to coalesce as a fluid, and then in turn to push the fluid up the pipe and drop it into the bottle. So what do you say this has to do with ice? Well, folks, water will re condense once it falls below 100 degrees. My containment or cooling um, vessel here is below 100 degrees. So as long as it's below 100 degrees, the vapor will return to a liquid state here. There's your proof. Stop killing ice cubes, people later on.